our agenda for today, uh, we've got our didactic presentation coming up uh, from our favorite CQII staff member, Mr. Kevin Garrett, uh, who's going to talk to us about the PDSA cycle and the documentation of QI work. Uh, Kevin's been doing a lot of work with our CQII consultants uh, on a lot of like, what does it mean to sort of build the training to make someone a quality expert? Uh, so this is some of the wisdom that comes from some of our other trainings, some of our QI learning labs that you may have uh, seen uh, in recent marketing emails. Uh, then we'll have a case presentation uh, from Sarah and our friends at Allies for Health and Wellbeing in Pittsburgh. We'll have our network discussion, and then we'll have a little bit of a wrap up at the end, uh, reminding folks of when our next network session will be. Next slide. And now we will hand it over to Mr. Kevin. Okay, thank you, Adam. I am going to take control of the screen, put my slides up, and hopefully you all can see this now. And they're okay. Bear with me. Okay. So obviously we're going to talk about PDSA cycles. <clears throat> I want to try something a little different in this presentation. Um, we have 10 minutes. So what I'd like you guys to think about while I'm going through this is any PDSA cycles that you've conducted, how they went, and with the information that you're kind of hearing, contrast that to what you either experienced or, or tried to do or whatever. And maybe that might help you see how to do this a little more efficiently or, or whatever. Um, and of course, we're gonna have questions at the end of this. So, some of the learning objectives, I think the one thing I'd like everybody to walk away with is the fact that PDSA cycles are really important to test ideas. They don't generate ideas per se. You, you go into a PDSA cycle discussion when you already have an idea that you want to test. Think of it this way. If, if you know Sunday night, you're sitting around watching reruns of something and you have a great idea on how to redesign the intake form. You sit down in front of your laptop and da 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 da, and you make changes to the intake form. You hand it to the intake workers and say, hey, we're going to use this from now on. And it turns out to be an unmitigated disaster because you haven't thought through it, or you know, maybe you were watching reruns as you were doing the form, whatever it is. You didn't test it. You didn't involve the other people that use this form, that do the intake, that have a kind of vested interest in this. So that's the beauty of the PDSA cycles. It helps you test your ideas. It goes from the theory to the actual, and it kind of moves improvement along as opposed to being a kind of bump around in the dark and you know knock over the furniture kind of thing. Um, very quickly, this was first developed by Walter Schuhart when he was doing work at Bell Labs. Um, it was called the Plan, Do, Check, Act cycle. Um, and W. Edwards Deming amended this and took check and replaced it with study. Deming felt that he wanted people to actually look at the data that you're collecting in the do cycle. And he felt that just saying check it is not good enough. It's not robust enough. Um, oops. So basically, again, I'm, I won't repeat this. You guys can look at the slides and stuff like that. But one of the most important things about this is the fact not only you're, you're, you're testing, but you're also documenting as you go along, right? You're collecting data, you have this idea, you have a hypothesis that if we do this, then this is gonna happen. And you document your work so that you kind of leave an audit trail, if any of you are familiar with that. You're leaving a record of your work so that other folks in your organization might be able to look at it and say, oh, this is how they did this. And this is why it worked. Or this is what we can do better this time. It's really important to document. And that's why we put documentation in the title of this presentation. Um, there's a lot of different things you'll see in the resources. Um, at the end of the presentation, there's a um, form that I found from the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services that is really a great, great thing to document your work with. It explains every step of the PDSA cycle as well as the model for improvement. Um, so basically in the PDSA cycle, because it's iterative, you're testing in bigger and bigger increments to see the effect that your idea is having on whatever process or whatever, whatever it is that you're trying to affect. Um, 
So let's go into the plan cycle for a minute, right? Because this is where a lot of the work occurs. Um, you wanna state the objective of the test and you wanna make sure that the team understands what the objective is and what their roles are in making this a successful PDSA test, right? You have to assign who's collecting data. You have to assign who, who's doing what and what their responsibilities are. If you think of your own experiences and you get put into a situation where it's not really clear what's going on, it's frustrating and chances are it's not gonna work real well. So you start to think about how you're going to make an effective first test. You know, one of the things that we say sometimes is, you know, see what you can do next Tuesday. That's all well and good. But the bottom line is you want to start, okay? And you want to start small. Again, you don't want to walk in on Monday morning and say, oh, we're going to change the entire intake process. I spoke to two other people and here's what we came up with. That's, that's not the way to do this. You're going to think about intermediate measures or what we call step measures at times, right? These are the measures that you're going to use going through this PDSA cycle that are going to help you think about your hypothesis and see if your predictions um, come true, right? If this, if we do this, then this will happen. Um, and you wanna make sure that you're on the right track with this. So these intermediate or step measures will help you do that. And again, you're gonna collect the actual data in the do cycle. And I, I will stress this throughout the presentation, but you, you need to document this. You need to document your plan. Um, it's good to have a data collection plan if this is going to be a big data collection effort. Outlining and defining those roles and responsibilities are gonna be key to making this successful. So <clears throat> in this hypothetical kind of test that we came up with here, our hypothesis is if we find out who our chronic no-shows are, which is what we're dealing with here, right? Um, and we contract with Uber Health for transportation, we're going to decrease the no-show rate from the current 30% to 10%. So that's kind of our aim statement. Um, so the hypothesis is if we contract with Uber Health, then the percentage of 30% goes down to 10%, or at least is going to affect it. We have a plan, <clears throat> and here's our plan. The case manager who is involved in our improvement team is going to be the person that arranges transportation. Someone's going to document the missed appointments, probably the case manager, client satisfaction, which is another one of our step measures, that's going to be documented, okay? And we've chosen to do just in the first cycle, one client on one day. And this client has already missed two appointments due to lack of transportation for no other reason. The next thing you do is you start, right? So, but think about what we just did in the plan cycle. You analyze your data, you set up some step measures, you started small or you plan to start small and you put the infrastructure in place. Everybody knows what their roles and responsibilities are. Now you move into the do cycle. This is where you actually carry out the plan. So when that person comes in from Uber Health, they drop her off or him off and they make their appointment, you now have something to collect, right? That's your data. So this doesn't have to be complicated either. You can use a very standardized data collection tool, which is a check sheet, an Excel spreadsheet, something that's just going to accumulate the data and you set it up so it accumulates it over time. And again, documenting, right? Not only are you leaving kind of an audit trail, but it's also a training tool when you think about it. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, you're going to show people, oh, this is how we did this. And when you guys, whoever you guys are, go to do your improvement project, then you can use our roadmap that we laid out for you. So that's a pretty significant training tool that probably most people don't have now. So this is what happens. Case manager arranges the pickup, or 
receptionist notes that the client did not miss the appointment, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see what's going on right in the check sheet. And again, it's very simple, it's documented, it's right in front of you. So now, now we have this data, right? And believe it or not, you one person, one time is data. I'm gonna look at this. The team is going to look at this. We're going to discuss it. Did it match our hypothesis? Did it work as predicted? Well, it seems to have, right? And then we might write a brief summary as to what we learned. We are going to note any observations where there might have been an anomaly. Um, suppose the client wasn't at the pickup address, you may have the wrong pickup address. So we have to make allowances for that and we have to understand why that happened and make tweaks to our test, all right? <clears throat> so in our hypothetical example, the case manager and the receptionist felt that we should expand the test and advise the committee as such. So again, we analyze the data, we see the results we thought we would, and now we're gonna move on to the act cycle. So here's where we take this knowledge that we've gained and basically say, okay, how do I wanna tweak this? Or do I wanna tweak this? If it worked the way you thought it would work, maybe you don't wanna tweak it. Maybe you wanna now say, okay, I'm gonna do this for a day. And I think in this day, I have three people that are quote unquote chronic no-show uh, folks, and I'm going to arrange Uber Health for all of them, right? Um, you would in the act cycle also say, okay, I think we need to tweak the test. Um, when we carry this example forward in some of our trainings, what we threw in is um, a couple of kind of gotchas one of them being that, you know, we didn't have the correct information. We found in theory that the intake worker wasn't always updating the client records. So we fixed that. Okay. That was something that we learned so that when we plan for our next cycle, we incorporated new information into it. We incorporated new procedures into it, but it's still basically the same thing. So the act cycle is where you apply your analysis. You expand the test if you're satisfied. If you're not satisfied, you're gonna tweak it. I always advise people, don't throw the test out after one test. Try another test. If it still doesn't support your hypothesis at all, then you have to make an informed decision about whether you wanna continue or not. But try not to do it after one test. And that, in a nutshell, is what a PDSA cycle is. Here are some resources for you. Uh, these slides will be available to you. The PDSA cycle worksheet is on the Target Center. I loaded it there for you. The PDSA cycle YouTube video is really good to a little bit to get a little bit more flavor for the history of this. And now we're going to open it up for questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. I think you make such a really good point about the scale of a PDSA cycle versus the scope of a QI project. Uh, I did a little experiment with one of my sites, QI project or PDSA cycle. They had to pick, right? So that we would play a little game to make sure we were looking at the right side. Does anyone have any questions for Kevin about the PDSA cycle or any of the information he presented about the scale and size of testing? Everybody has appropriately sized PDSA cycles. He says eyebrow raised, right? Slightly looking at you. So one thing I would say uh, moving forward, when you think about your PDSA cycles, almost always every team I have ever coached, it needs to be smaller than what they proposed. So look at what you put on the table and ask yourself, how do I make this test smaller? And you might be getting closer to the right size test. Thank you so much, Kevin, for coming to present to us live. We really appreciate it. Uh, we'll make sure if folks need any additional resources uh, about the PDSA cycle. Also, please feel free to reach out to your QI coaches. They are really knowledgeable in this area mm -hmm. and can really give you some great feedback on what you're thinking about testing and whether the thing you're thinking about testing is at the right scale and size uh, for your project. True. Thank you, Adam.